live stream. Welcome back from the live stream uh, moment of silence. And uh, we're going to read a a missionary letter from um, our missionaries in Tanzania. Um, This is uh, Tom and Kelly Harmon. He says this uh, this is actually written from uh, Eric Bowman, the field director, Africa field director at BIMI. And he says, this past Friday afternoon, Kelly became ill uh, and went to lie down to rest. Tom checked on her uh, from time to time as she was sleeping well. But on Saturday morning, he checked on her and he found her to be unresponsive. He was able, uh, he was able to take her to uh, one of the local hospitals in Tanzania where she was tested positive for COVID. Kelly remained unresponsive throughout Saturday and the seriousness of her condition became apparent. Sunday morning, our insurance company with Baptist International Missions Incorporated, in cooperation with the hospital staff, concluded that she needed a medevac flight down to South Africa. The special flight was arranged, and she was flown down to South Africa and arrived on Monday. But because of COVID protocols, Tom and the family were not able to accompany her on this flight, and arrangements are being made for them to fly commercially down to South Africa as soon as possible. BIMI has excellent international health insurance coverage for their missionaries, But as you can imagine, there will be extra expenses that the family will incur incur while in South Africa. The mission has advanced uh, them some necessary funds to assist with this. But I am writing on Tom's behalf to you as as their prayer supporters, asking if you could assist them financially to help cover the cost of their plane tickets and expenses while they're in South Africa. Fortunately, the Harmons will not be alone as our missionaries in South Africa are willing to assist them throughout this situation. Any contributions to the Harmons account number 1572 at BIMI will be immediately available for their use. I am currently in Africa, but if there are any questions regarding this, please please feel free to email me, and he's got it on the prayer letter here, and I will reply as soon as possible. Thank you once again for your support of the Harmon family, and I know you will be in extra prayer for Kelly and the family during this time. And I've got Kelly on our um, prayer letter tonight, so you can take that home. We'll be praying tonight for her, and then you can take that home and pray for them throughout the, the week. Then the last uh, letter is a long one from the, um, the John Bach family. And he says, Greetings in the name of our Savior. It's hard to believe that uh, well over a year has passed since necessity required us to leave the place, or our place of ministry in British Columbia, Canada. Um, our hope obviously was to return as soon as possible, thinking that the duration in Tennessee would be a matter of months at the most. Of course, the Lord knew what we could uh, not foresee. And in hindsight, uh, we can see his superintending hand in bringing us back to our church at a time when it was uh, when help was greatly needed. While I cannot in this letter go into great detail, it will suffice to say that upon our arrival, we were met with a host of issues that needed to be addressed uh, and a distinct lack of available help to help to take care of them. From routine maintenance to upkeep, to upkeep to the grounds, upgrading technology, outreach efforts, and many other things that have required attention, we have made uh, great stri- strides toward We have made great strides forward in addressing many of these things, though much remains to do. For um, home church needs, he writes, We have some urgent things um, for you to join us in prayer about concerning our home church. We were confronted when we came down to the U.S. with the reality that things have not been well at the home front. Our dear pastor of 81 years old and the burden of the church has become too much, or our dear pastor is 81 years old and the burden of the church has become too much for him to handle alone. Uh, The difficult question for us was how to return to Canada if and when the doors would open and leave these pressing needs behind without someone to stand in the gap. Until several weeks ago, we had really no choice but to remain in the U.S., but Canada now has loosened the requirements for non-essential activity provided travelers have completed the approved vaccination regimen. For reasons which I will not go into here, we have not not been vaccinated. If that was the only consideration concerning the timing of returning to Canada, we would go ahead and get the Fauci ouchy, as some call it. Um, But there have been other concerns afloat. Pastor Combs has asked me to pray about serving with him at the church as an assistant pastor and to take the church when he is to step down. Considering the circumstances that required us to return to the U.S. in our home church, we have prayed long and earnestly about that prospect. We we so do desire, we so desire uh, the Lord's will. Our wish would be to return to Canada And while that has not been possible up to this point and remains so because of our current project at hand, because the current project at hand is not yet finished, we wanted to let our supporting churches know how best they can pray for us. This would be, this would not be a full paid, um, full time paid position. The church is small, though we have seen recent growth. With much work and prayer, the Lord is blessing our church. Yet so much remains. And we, uh, we say as, or with the apostle of old, brethren, pray for us. 
for the house progress. He says, the Lord has blessed our church with uh, four new members. Two, uh, two people have responded to our Google ad campaigns and a couple uh, transferring membership from another church. They have jumped right in and are ready to serve where they are needed. One of these new members, along with a longtime member of our church, has been a great assistance to me in rebuilding the church parsonage. What started as a partial floor replacement has turned into a whole house rebuild. From sheetrock to siding and just about everything in between, the damage from the termites, together with the um, faulty original construction, have required us to go to the extent in taking care of this, uh, to great extent in taking care of these pressing issues. To tell folks, uh, or I tell folks that this project is supplying me with a lifetime of sermon illustrations. With the price of lumber down and its from its ridiculous highs, and with the help of the Lord, the help that the Lord has brought, we are pressing on to finish. It is our hope for the upstairs to be reasonably finished by the end of the year. Considering all the problems, I think he means the end of the year 2021. This was written in November 21. Perhaps the Lord was preserving it. Uh, or, or Considering all the problems we have um, uncovered, it is almost a miracle that the house didn't collapse or burn to the ground. Perhaps the Lord was preserving it so it could be restored. This is God's house, and we pray that it may be a blessing to many of his servants for years to come. Then um, online, online outreach, he says, Recently we concluded our verse-by-verse -verse series of messages through Ephesians that we began around the first of the year for the dear folks of Hazleton and Terrace, British, British Columbia. With the exception of the first few sermons, which were preached before we began recording and posting them to our Hazleton Baptist Mission YouTube channel, all are available online, and we are constantly adding new videos, Bible studies, and other content, as well as um, we hope... Uh, as well that we hope to be a blessing to other folks. We have, ma we have maintained our online advertising for our outreach in the broader Hazleton and surrounding areas. We would love to expand our online presence through this very cost-effective method of outreach throughout a much greater portion of British Columbia uh, and beyond, and we'll do so as the Lord provides. Please pray, for, um, please, please pray the Lord will give us needed resources to make uh, the best of this opportunity. One tool that would be helpful in regard uh, would be a quality website. If anyone knows someone who would be able to and willing to assist in that, we would love to speak with them about it. The possibilities for making the gospel known broadly th uh, through Internet advertising is limitless. Um, and then um, the Canadian concerns. <clears throat> Canada is a very needy mission field, and we will strive to press forward with our outreach through whatever channels the Lord provides to continue to preach the gospel, disciple new believers, and help to establish churches. In many ways, Internet outreach is an ideal tool due to its cost effectiveness and broad reach. Through, mar through targeted advertising and barriers of distance, um, through targeted advertising, the barriers of distance can easily be overcome. When Paul and Barnabas preached in the cities of Asia Minor and regions, regions beyond, they found the place of public discourse, they found the places of, places of public discourse uh, whether the synagogue, amphitheater, college, riverside, or plaza. Unfortunately, in many respects, the widespread adoption of the Internet and social media means that such places of public interaction have less and less of a hold in society. What this presents, however, is the opportunity to reach people where they are and minister the gospel to them effectively and efficiently. The cults and false religions, false religions have certainly beaten God's people to the punch when it comes to utilizing these means. But better late than never... By uh, the grace of God, we hope to soon expand our efforts in these regards um, to the best of our abilities with what resources of time and finances the Lord provides. With the unholy alliance we have lately seen between the powers of government and the private sector, especially within the technology services industry, we realize that uh, time is of the essence in utilizing these resources for the glory of God while the door remains open to do so. In closing, we wish to thank you for your continued faithful support and prayers of our ministry. If you have any questions for our pastor, Brother Combs, his cell number is, is as always, at the footer of this page. Um, he has told me many times that our coming was godsend, a godsend, and I pray that we have been a blessing and an encouragement and a help to the dear saints of Community Baptist Church. I intend to reach out to our supporters directly in the coming weeks and speak in greater detail concerning our next steps. We cover your prayers, and we look forward to answering any questions that anyone might have. I count it a high honor to have your confidence and support in our ministry. We love each of you and have um, uh, each of you who have given so sacrificially, and we trust our Lord to continually guide each step we take that we may always be in His perfect will and about His business as He fulfills His purpose in and through our lives for the praise of His great glory. God bless you all. From John and Emily Bach. That was a long one. Amen. But uh, pray for Him as they pray about taking that church and as that, that pastor is in the transition. So those are the three prayer letters for tonight.
Um, continue to pray for um, the Harmons and Miss Kelly Harmon, especially as she's in the hospital there in South Africa. And if you would, just stand and um, welcome someone to church tonight and uh, make sure that you go and pick up one of the uh, condensed forms of the paper back there that uh, tell you about these prayer um, letters. And uh, then we'll come back after that and we'll, uh, we'll have our offering. Amen. Sing that verse together. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. All right, ushers, you come forward. We're going to take up tonight's offering. Wednesday night offerings go all towards Fall Fellowship. And this is the time of year when we say it'll be here sooner than you know. And it seems like within a month and a half we're saying, Fellowship is three weeks away. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you, and we sure do look forward to that time when we have the, the preachers and their families come for Fall Fellowship and just all that that entails. The preaching that we hear, Lord, just the blessing it is to have those people here. And Lord, I ask that you just would help us to prepare our hearts and, and minds to be a blessing to them. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done, what you continue to do for this church. Would you bless the ministries? Would you watch over Pastor and give him some help tonight? And Lord, we'll just give you thanks for this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. sing one more song tonight. Let's turn to page 393. Sing, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. Page 393. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise. 
Tim Leonard is going to preach for us tonight. Um, Brother Tim. Yeah, the whistles and the clapping, all that kind of thing. I told him, I said, we could dim the lights and start the fog machines. You could come out from the back. He wouldn't have any part of that. Huh? Would have been a good night for it. Thank you. <laughs> I, he said that. I told him I'm in a fog half my life, so I have my own fog machine. I navigate through it all the time. Turn to the book of uh, Gospel of John, chapter 20. The Gospel of John, chapter 20. I'll get out my 10 pages of notes, and don't worry, I'm not going to pay any attention to them most of the time. John chapter 20, the pastor called today and said he wouldn't be able to be here tonight and asked me if I'd fill the pulpit, and thank you very much, preacher, for your confidence. I'm sure you're watching tonight. I hope you'll feel better soon, and honestly, I'd rather you were up here tonight rather than me. I'm not going to lie, I enjoy it when I do get the chance, but uh, thank you very much for your confidence and allowing me the opportunity to preach. <clears throat> John chapter 20. And, um, boy, let me see here. What verse? I want to look at verse number 11. Verse number 11. And the Word of God says, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels in white sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. I was amazed. I, I, this amazes me. She thought he was the gardener. Can you believe it? A case of mistaken identity. Here she is with the, the very Son of God almost beside her. And she didn't know who he was. I'd like to speak to you tonight on the unrecognized Christ. Let's pray. Lord, what a subject. Lord, I come before you trembling tonight. Lord, I love to, I love to speak about Jesus. Lord, our all in all. Lord, he said if everything was written, all he did, all the books in the world couldn't contain Lord, we just got a few minutes tonight, so I need your help. I need you to guide my thoughts. I pray you would 
Help me to say what needs to be said, what will accomplish your purpose, Lord. I want to be a blessing tonight to your people. So I pray your spirit's help. For Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. Years ago, I read a uh, story <laughs> about a fellow who'd gotten a new car. And uh, this was back in the days when cars just first came on the scene, early 1900s. He had a Model T Ford, and uh, he was out for a ride one day, and he was so proud of himself, and he's riding down the road, and all of a sudden, boop, 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 pulls it off the side of the road, broke down. And just, I guess if you're a Ford owner, you just have to get used to that. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> he gets out, he rolls up his sleeves, he opens the hood, he gets under, and he's underneath going at it, he's tearing things off and turning bolts, and going at it, and... You know how it goes, fellas. You've all been there. If you've worked on a car before, <laughs> Brother Dan, I know you've been there. <clears throat> so uh, he's working on the car, and pretty soon another car pulls up beside him, and this old guy's sitting in there, and he looks over at him. He says, hey there, young fella. You need a hand with that thing? And about that time, he's pretty exasperated. <laughs> he looks at the guy and says, old man, I probably know, I've probably forgotten more about this thing than you'll ever know about it. I don't need your help. Thank you. Good. Have a good day. The old man, Henry Ford, went driving down the road. <laughs> Whew. I wonder if Mary felt like that. <laughs> the very one who could solve the problem and just didn't recognize who it was. How many times... Are we like that, I wonder? There's Mary. She's just, twice they said, woman, why weepest thou? I don't know if it's, you know, the tears in her eyes or the early morning gloom. And, but she sees him there. She thinks he's the gardener. I, did he have a rake in his hand? I don't think so. She thought he was the gardener. He's the Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. The one that was... <clears throat> he that liveth and was dead and is alive forevermore. Wow, she, she thought he was the gardener. It gets exciting, though. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. You know what? He revealed himself to her. How? He said her name. Mary. She knew who he was then. There was something about that. Her response? Master. When she finally realized it. Case of mistaken identity, times of great sorrow, many times I'm afraid that we just don't recognize that Jesus is there. Just don't recognize. Ah, boy, we've got Dr. Phil, we've got Oprah, we've got Dear Abby, we've got every... I don't even know the, the names of the people to, that are in vogue today, the talk show people or the, the, uh, um, the self-help people. But boy, the self-will, notice what she says there, her self-will. She says, sir, t if you born hands, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. I'll solve the problem. How many times do we want to solve the problem? And Jesus is there, the problem solver, the only one who can actually solve the problem. And he's ignored. Turn over to uh, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. I want to look at another case of mistaken identity. There's actually about seven different ones, and for time's sake, I'm only going to look at a few of them tonight. There's seven different times that I've found reading through the Gospels where Jesus wasn't recognized. People around him were there. They just <laughs> didn't know who he was. I was sitting there back in the pew before I came up here, and, and uh, I suppose anybody preaches, you know, at some point in time, you, you know, it's almost time for it to come out. If you haven't preached a lot, and, and, and I don't preach a lot, but you're sitting there, and you, you know you've prepared, you know it's what God wants you to preach, you're sitting there thinking, Lord, is, I, I'm looking at the people, is this what they need to hear? <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know what? The people we're going to look at tonight that didn't recognize Jesus were the people who were the closest on earth to him. The disciples were in a boat. Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to look for the verse. I think it's uh, verse 22. Straightway, Jesus, this is after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus can, I've got to take my glasses off. 
do, if you have trifocals, you will understand the problem with these things. I, <clears throat> I, I don't like to keep moving my head back and forth, so I'm going to preach without my glasses. Straight way, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. I can't see you, so don't make, you can make faces at me if you want. Straight way, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him under the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! It's a spirit! They cried out for fear. They didn't know it was him. Can you believe it? <laughs> And straightway Jesus spake unto, the, say, unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Wow. Can you imagine what it would have been like? In times of great peril, times of great danger, in the midst of the storm, in the boat, with the waves tossing. I don't know about you, I don't like being in boats. I, I know there's fellows here in the church that go out on the big lakes and fish. And I've done that a couple of times, and I have gotten sick every time. I've taken, I don't know how many drama mean, and for me, it does not help. <clears throat> we went around California one time for what my son's uh, graduation from college and they talked me into going on a whale watching adventure out off the coast of Monterey and we're out in the boat and I thought I'll do it this time I loaded up on Dramamine and we're out there and you know yeah, just I, I can't take it and I'm down in the bottom of the boat and find my kids run down dad dad come up and see the whales are out here <clears throat> I can empathize with the disciples in the boat I would have been like Jonah in the bottom of the boat I don't know if he was throwing up or not but <clears throat> I, would, I would guess that if uh, when you're in a boat that's tossing and turning but um, this account in Mark chapter 6 the same account says that they were toiling in rowing they were toiling in rowing that idea of toiling doesn't mean you're just out there hard working it has the idea of pain and torment and torture they're out here they're rowing for their very lives they think it's all over and it's funny because it says <laughs> the account of mark says he would have passed them by <laughs> he would have passed them by you're kidding they're out on the boat they're about to be swallowed up by the waves and drowned and they see the Lord Jesus walking, and they think he's a spirit. They'd just been with the guy a few hours ago. They didn't know who he was. One more place in Luke chapter 24. Christ was unrecognized in times of sorrow, in times of great peril. In Luke chapter 24... Jesus was unrecognized, just, I call it, in the mundane, <laughs> everyday life. <clears throat> you think about some of the things we read about in the Bible. All the great uh, instances where God flexed his mighty arm. I think about the life of Moses. You know, Moses lived, uh, what was 120 years? I think I've calculated one time, it's like 43,800 days. That's a long time to live, folks. That's a lot of days. But I want to tell you what, the Red Sea parting was only one day out of that 43,800. What about the other 43,799 days? Now, I, for granted, there were other great events in the life of Moses, much more so than mine. But all those days <laughs> that were the mundane, the roteness, the the monotony of life that we all go through. You think about your life. We live day after day after day, the everyday mundane things of life. Here's the story in Luke chapter 24. Look at verse number, we'll find it in a second, 13. Those who know their Bible well know this is the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. After Jesus was crucified and risen from the dead, it says, Behold, two of them. I don't know what the antecedent is for that pronoun. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a couple of the disciples. 
but uh, it's a little ambiguous. There are two of them. I have a question mark beside it. They went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass, while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And it goes on to, to talk with them. What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one whose name is Cleophas and answered and said, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast not known the things which shall come to pass there in these days? And he says, What things? And they said concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Beside all this, today's the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of her company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. When they found not his body, they came saying, they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, not, not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. They still don't know who he is. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the uh, quote from the Lord's Supper. He took bread and blessed it and gave thanks. Gave them, but saying, this, body, this is my body which is given for you. <clears throat> Verse 31 says, And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And look at the response here. <laughs> they said one to another, did not our heart burn with it within us while he talked with us, by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures? How many times do we live our everyday life? <laughs> how, how, does your heart burn? <laughs> we have the availability to daily, but how many times we just fail to recognize Christ working in our lives on an everyday basis. I've got several other ones, I, but for time's sake, I, I wrote down a couple pages of comments that I'd like to make about these instances. In every one of these cases, they all saw him, but they didn't recognize him. Now, that's hard to understand. <clears throat> Let me give you some thoughts on that. We live in a world that operates by sight. A world that operates by sight. Oh, the old saying, seeing is believing. But you know what? That's not how God works. Just the opposite. God wants faith, not sight. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to him must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Paul said, we walk by faith and not by sight. But we live in a world that is just so, we're, we're so uh, inundated with the idea that we have to see it to believe it. Just, just think about the last year and a half, two years. We've got to follow the science. Yeah, right. What's the, one of the main tenets of science is observation, seeing. You have to see it. You've got to be able to reproduce it. We live in a world that our worldly system, that's, that's what they worship. Seeing, being able to observe the science. Of course, I, I believe it's like Paul said uh, to Timothy, uh, beware of the uh, oppositions of science, falsely so-called. So I think that's what we uh, deal with today more than we Amen. would love to admit. You know, we all want to see it. We all want to see him. Fanny Crosby, oh, she couldn't wait to see the, the Lord Jesus. She couldn't see in this life, of course. But look, I, I want to see him too. Yeah. Think about a gospel song. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Thomas 
Doubting Thomas, except I see the prints of the nails in his hand, and thrust my hand into his side. The Greeks in John chapter 12 came to the disciples and said, Sir, we would see Jesus. We live in a world that's based on sight. The problem with that is, many times we fail to comprehend what we see. Or we misinterpret what we see. Think about 2 Kings chapter 6. Elisha's servant went outside, and all he saw was a bunch of soldiers ready to come in and take them away. And what did Elisha do? He said, Lord, open his eyes. And he went back out and looked. Oh, oh, chariots of fire. No worries. Misinterpreted. He, he just didn't comprehend what he was seeing. The disciples in the boat. <laughs> Here's the guy that could whisper, peace be still, and everything's going to cease. And they think he's a ghost, a spirit. We're all going to die. Sight doesn't always work. Mary thought he was the gardener. In Matthew chapter 25, at the judgment, there's going to be two groups Jesus talked about. And this is interesting. Both, the, not just the accursed, who go, go off into hellfire, but it says also the righteous. In verse, uh, Matthew 25, verse 44, it says, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? They saw, but they didn't understand. He said, as much as you've done unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Look at Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. So many times, we base so much of what we believe on what we see. I'll believe that when I see it. Oh, yeah, there it is. I had the wrong reference written down. Matthew 17, after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, bring them up to a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. <laughs> Wrong thing to say. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. What's he say? Hear ye him. Peter misinterpreted what he saw. And God smacks him down. And what's he tell him? This is my beloved son. He says, hear ye him. Now, let's go back to, we live in a world that operates by sight, but God doesn't want us to operate by sight. God expects us to operate by faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Faith cometh by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing by the word of God. I want you to think back about the three different examples we've looked at. Mary didn't know who he was until he said, Mary spoke. The disciples were in the boat. They didn't realize it was Jesus until he said, Be of good cheer. The people on the road to Emmaus, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they heard him speaking, but it wasn't until he spoke specifically something they specifically remembered him saying, the prayer. And they heard his voice. <clears throat> In all of these occasions, <laughs> they had to hear his voice or recall a previous experience where they heard his voice in order for them to realize and to see and to recognize who Jesus was at that, at that given moment. Folks, you, you can't overemphasize the importance of the Word of God. <laughs> the hearing of God's Word is, is, is incredibly important to our lives. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. 
and they follow me. It's not if you can see him, it's can you hear his voice? And where's his voice? It's right here, the word of God. We only hear him by this, by his word. It's amazing. The rich man, in Luke chapter 16, the rich man in hell went to Abraham. He said to, he said to Abraham, he said, I pray that you would take Lazarus and send him to my five brethren. He may testify unto them, that, lest they also come to this place of torment. And what did Abraham say to them? If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. <laughs> hear it. Hear the word of God. It's no wonder that we don't see Jesus in our everyday lives. It's no wonder we don't recognize him when we're in trouble, we're in peril, we're in sorrow. We're, 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 we're so, the world just drowns out his voice. Apostle Paul wrote about so many voices in the world. We can't hear him. All, all, all we hear is, is uh, I mean, we're too busy listening to the uh, talk talk radio and Fox News and our favorite blog and our favorite TV show and, and uh, my goodness, I, I, all the, all the uh, talk about, oh boy, Joe Biden did this and Donald Trump did this and there's more COVID coming and, and uh, there's climate change and the world's going to burn up and there's more COVID. You're going to get COVID if you walk out to the grocery store and, and somebody did this. and ah! You want to plug your ears because the voices of this world, it's not, by, it's not by chance, folks. It's by design. There's somebody out there, the prince and power of the air of this world, that wants to do everything he can to keep us from hearing the word of God. Time to pull out the earbuds and just get away and hear him. One other observation here. It's easy. <laughs> when you're in a storm, it's easier to row <laughs> than to believe what you can't see. <laughs> you ever been there? <laughs> oh, man. Men are especially bad about this. <laughs> Toiling and rowing. We don't have the eyes to see because our ears are so full of this world world's music, the world's talk, cares of life. In all of these instances, every case we've looked at, you know what? Jesus was waiting for one thing, to be acknowledged. And the people couldn't acknowledge until they heard him say something. If we would just, boy, listening and hearing are some of the hardest things to do, aren't they? So much easier to just coast through life, but listening and hearing this right here. It's so much easier to row. It's so much easier to look for proof of what you believe. Oh, yeah, isn't it great? Uh, folks, I'm not looking for them to find Noah's Ark sticking out of the ice somewhere. Big whoop. I've already heard what God said about it. I don't need that. I mean, we, we spend so much time looking for proof, archaeological digs, archaeological discoveries, the Shroud of Turin. All these things are going to prove that the Bible is true. I already know the Bible is true. Why? Because I heard it. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Right there it is, folks. All we have to do is hear Him. You folks here tonight, you're seasoned believers for the most part. The majority of people here, you've been saved for a long time. You've read the Word of God for a long time. But you know what? The, the people we looked at tonight, they were with Jesus night and day for three years. And boy, somehow they missed it. And you know what? I miss it too. And I would suspect a lot of us in here miss it. So I challenge you tonight, just... Turn off the radio and get out the book. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessings of faith. Lord, where would we be without 
faith in the Son of God. Lord, I thank you so much for your word, Lord, for your, for your church, a place we can come and assemble and encourage one another, Lord, for preaching. Lord, thank you for giving us preaching. For our pastor, be with him tonight, Lord, bring him back safely, quickly. Lord, help us to be better servants, Lord. May we be so close to you. Help us to tune out this wicked world. And Lord, I pray we'll tune in to you. Lord, increase our faith. May we know you. May we glorify you in all that we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tim. Amen. If we stand to our feet, we'll have a time of invitation. Brother Luke, what number you got? They're still looking for one. Amen. Maybe tonight would be a good time to get around the altar and just thank the Lord that there was that moment, that day, when you heard the word. I can remember the day I got saved. It would have been six weeks that I'd gone to a fundamental independent Baptist church, heard things that I'd never heard my whole life growing up in a church. And uh, it was just like week after week, the Lord was just revealing himself more and more as I heard things that I just was amazed at. And that sixth week, uh, there was preaching from John chapter 3. And he said, Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I thought, wow. Wow. There's the word of God telling me there's something I must do to be saved. I had grown up being told that everybody goes to heaven. As long as you're a good person, you know about Jesus. Uh, Here's a, a, a stipulation that Jesus himself gave. I'm so thankful for the word of God and that ability to hear his word. Whether through your ears or through sign language, through braille, You can hear the word of God. Sometimes they see it in the life lived by you. But what an amazing word that can transform a soul. Amen. Tonight would be a great night to get around the altar. We've got a few minutes before the kids come up. Brother Luke's going to lead us in a song. Tonight would be a great time to get around the altar and just thank the Lord for his word. And that day that you came to know it, to hear his word, to hear him speak to you and desire for you to be his child. Amen. Brother Luke, what what page? 546. 546. You can sing along with him. But don't miss your opportunity to come and thank the Lord. Amen.
his word shall not fail you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, and thank you, Lord, for just the blessing it is to know you as our Father and as our Savior. Lord, I I just thank you for allowing sinners like me, Lord, to be in your presence because of the blood of your precious Son. Lord, we ask that you just would bless the rest of this evening as we come before you in prayer corporately as a church, and Lord, we, we desire, Lord, to please you in this time when we draw close. And Lord, thank you for the preaching. Thank you for Brother Tim and his willingness to preach on such short notice. Lord, I, again, I ask that you just would watch over Pastor and his family and just heal them. And Lord, we just give you thanks for all that you do and all that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The prayer sheets are on the back. Make sure you get those. The kids will be coming in soon. And we'll have our time.